gone. Um, so, Lindsay, let me. Do you have a Ziploc bag? I do. If you want a Tupperware, too. I brought uh, my case up, but if you're going back to the center after this, then that'd be good to just put yeah. it in the Tupperware. Yeah. And I've also got. Can we wear a glove for this? Or? No, you don't need Um, hey Lindsay, is this where you fall in? Yes, probably. <laughs> Most likely. Oh, there we go. So, one thing you can do before you put it in the Ziploc bag. Hey, Lindsay, let's do that A. Um, and, and one thing we... Let me zoom in on it. Yep. One thing we can do for the, for the, um, viewing audiences, we can actually float the egg in the water. Hold on a minute. Okay. Can you see it? Got it. Great. So, um, if you're careful about it, you can, actually, you know what we can do here? I'm going to come up there yep. without tipping us over, hopefully. We'll see. Um, and I don't know whether this container will work real well for it, but if you just set the egg in there... Got it. Yeah. Um, it floats a little. Yeah, I'm going to actually get it all the way in the water. Yeah, so um, the developmental stage of the embryo changes the buoyancy of the egg so that... Um, you can tell in a fresh egg um, how far developed it is. John? Yeah. Audience wants to know is there any cracks or pips in the uh, egg? Oh. No, no. I, it, it looks totally, totally whole and inviolable. And um, I'm demonstrating the float test, Bill, so that um, I can show people how, how we can check what the developmental stage of the egg is without even opening it. Because I'm going to collect the eggshells from the other egg. Yeah. Um, basically, as the egg and the embryo form, the, the flotation of the egg changes. Um, so we, uh, and I'll, I'll have to go back and look up what this uh, vertical float means. But we should, we may have a first indication Ooh. of um, how far along the egg got by um, just how it's floating in the water. Needless to say, we don't do this with the, the viable eggs while the wounds are nesting. Yeah. But this one, um, as, as people who've been watching will, will know, this, this may well be the first egg that was laid and not tended very well early in the nesting when there were a lot of black flies. Oh, and it's I probably, I, I'd say there's, you know, um, almost a quarter of the eggs that we're aware of that either hatch or don't in New Hampshire um, don't hatch. So we, we collect for every uh, every year now, we collect over 50 inviable eggs and a lot of them are probably duds from the start. So that there's there's good reason to think this, this egg um, just doesn't have, um, if I step never on developed this. past the early stages. If I step out, am I going to sink? Yeah, but let me put the egg down. <laughs> and uh, get an oar in the water, at least one. Oh. I just need a little bit of a yeah, you, place to step so I can get the rest of the eggshells. Yeah, if you stand, try standing right next to the bowl, you know, right next yeah. to that landscape. All right, will you yeah. hang on to this? Yeah. Uh, my, uh, where's the other oar? Um, it's in the water. <laughs> <laughs> If I sink up to my chest on that camera, I'm gonna be kind of squishy. It's what a loon likes. Kind of very squishy. Is that, is that far enough to uh, grab what you need? Whew. Yeah, almost. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Can you hand me that bag? Yeah. <laughs> this is a fun balancing act. Oh, oh gosh. There you go. Any membrane in the water, John? I do not. 
I wonder if we got that. Hey Bill, did yeah. was there any sighting of the of the loon removing the egg membrane from the nest? Ooh. Uh, yes, the first one it, it threw uh, it threw it sort of towards me. Okay. Like that direction. Huh. It sort of picked it up in its beak and swung it. I don't see it obviously, but it could be around here somewhere. Maybe it's a, a snapping turtle snack. <laughs> Alright, there's a lot of little pieces. Yeah. I got most of them. I'll have to lay this out to dry when I get back. Yeah, and I don't know how well people can hear us, but just to narrate a little more, the, the um, you know, this process of collecting the eggshells and any unhatched eggs is something that we're doing at all the nests that we're aware of in New Hampshire. So at this point, a couple hundred nests a year or so. And um, the eggs we can save and test for contaminants. The eggshells we can actually measure the thickness of. And we have eggshells collected all the way back to, I think we have one eggshell from the 1930s in, on Squam Lake uh, when eggshells for loons and, and other birds were noticeably thicker prior to the use of DDT. And since then, the, the eggshells of loons have gotten thinner in the 1960s and 70s, and then gradually over the decades all since right. DDT was banned, okay, uh, thicker the, again. The yeah. So that's what'll happen to the eggshells. Um, yeah, this this egg is this whole and pretty average size. That'll go in the freezer. Okay, we're good. Um, do you have do you have a separate Ziploc bag? For the egg? Uh, let me see. I've got, I've got one. Oh, that good. Okay. You got next one? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Anything we forgot to mention, Bill? Absolutely. Yeah, nice work. I <laughs> don't think anyone will ever beat your balance skills, though. They're rather impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mom. How many years have they been using this pod? So, Mike calls them pods, but they've been using this pod or that pod over there for you know, since this loon was banded in the late 1990s. Oh, least. wow. Okay. Yeah, was yeah, this, decades. It was over there last year, wasn't it? Um, last year in 2016 was it on was this here? spot. What but will happen to the nest? What will happen to this nest? Um, it's going to stay pretty much the way, the way it looks now. Um, it'll get matted down over the winter by the snow and ice, but Next spring, it'll look a lot like it does now with all the, without all the vegetation grown up. And that's one of the reasons why it's helpful to clean off the eggshells so we can, we can tell whether it's been used going into next year or not. Um, if, it, if it has eggshells in it next year, we might mistake them for that year's nest attempt. Um, 
But yeah, it'll look pretty much the same as it does right right this moment. And there is, as Lindsay was asking, there is another hummock over 10 yards away that they sometimes use. And this spring when the water was higher, they were checking out this spot and that one and one even farther. Um, yeah. Um, another question is, um, are, are, are you gonna open this egg up to find out what's, what's, what happened and, and how long uh, before, before that'll be done? I, I think, I think, Bill. I think, given the interest in this um, nest and it, and in the egg, um, just because it's the one that's been caught on camera, that that we can um, probably open it right away back at the Loon Center um, and check to see what the developmental stage is, and then save the contents. And typically, the eggs are archived in our freezers at the Loon Center, um, or um, depending on which lake they're from, shipped out that year for um, contaminants testing. And most commonly that's, that's mercury, but um, Squam Lake and uh, other reference lakes connected with that investigation, we might be testing them for a, a broader range of contaminants, um, a whole suite of different legacy contaminants like the DDT, and then um, other contaminants of emerging concern like uh, flame retardants, stain repellents, things like that. So that that um, whole suite of contaminants is a really expensive set of analyses, a couple <laughs> thousand dollars an egg or so, and um, it's only a very limited number of eggs that are tested that way. Um, and I think that we have tested in the past an egg from uh, this pond for mercury as well as the blood sample taken from the adult loons when they were originally captured in the late 1990s. So, you know, one thing, as we open the egg up, Bill, uh, maybe we can provide to folks who are tuning in some of that history in terms of the mercury levels on this pond, um, just to kind of give a, a context for what the egg collection and analysis is, could. Is that why the um, egg shells have, have thinned out? Yeah, the, the eggshell thinning is from um, the, the widespread use of DDT in, um, you know, in North America it, that peaked in the 1960s. And then as people realized the, the hazard, not just to birds, but to um, everything in the environment, um, DDT was banned. And to, there's still DDT in the lakes from that era and in the eggs and eggshells, but it's it's subsiding, and so the the effect as far as thinning the eggshells is much reduced. Um, I think you know one of the ongoing projects that we have is as we measure the eggshells is to track the re re thickening mm -hmm. of the eggshells, and uh, the the thickness today in the eggshells we're collecting here is probably going to be close to what it would have been prior to the use of DDT, you know, in the early 20th century. But um, it's still not completely uh, clean and thick. And how far do you think the uh, pair and the chick is right now, and how long will they stay on this pond? Yeah, Lindsay's going to go check again. But as we came up uh, this morning and, and arrived here, we did look out on the typical brooding area, which is um, uh, um, some distance away, as is typical, and um, we didn't see the loons there. <laughs> so they, they will, though, with the chicks, stay on the same water body for um, through the fall, usually. And the, the chick will need a couple, three months, uh, 10 to 12 weeks, before it's able to fly. And during that whole time, um, it will be on this water body. And generally, especially in the first couple months, at least one of the adult loons will be hanging around with it, foraging on this water body. The other, uh, the other adult loon may take off and, and go elsewhere. But it will be Octo late October, mid-November before the adult loons and then finally the, the loon chick fly off the pond and head to the coast. So yeah. it's just 11 o'clock now. Do you want to show the egg one more time to those that tuned in a little bit uh, after the fact? Absolutely. So, uh, Bill, I, you'll have to tell us um, what you've got as far as a view, um, and I can hold hold the egg up. But hold, hold it up, I'll zoom in on you. Yeah. So, 
This is cool. Usually, um, we'll take an eggshell stick. Yeah, well, oh. let me just let me just uh, see if you can. That camera is so great. Let's see if you can zoom in on the shell so people can see. Um, <laughs> are you uh, are you ready to zoom, yeah, Bill? Good. Yeah. So so these are the eggshells, and typically a, a hatched eggshell will look like this. The membrane will be separated from the shell. If we come to a nest and find that the eggshells are in bigger fragments and the membranes still adhere to the to the shell, we know that it was probably predated. But all these little fragments is a hatch. And then the egg itself, the unhatched egg here, um, is pretty typical, well camouflaged. So I came across a couple eggs yesterday that I think were from last year's nest at a different lake. Oh. Nobody had, no, no scavenger had found them in that time. Oh wow. Yeah. And what we'll do as we um, head back and, and open this egg up is, before we open it, we'll measure the volume of the egg, the water it displaces and the, the length and width, the standard measurements. Um, and we can compare those measurements with the contaminant levels we measure in the egg contents and um, with the ecological attributes of the water body, um, the age of the balloons, if they're, if they're known age, just to get a sense for how all those factors can influence um, the, the health and viability of the egg and the, the, the morphometrics, the size uh, that goes with that and the weight that goes with that. Okay, if we've got any last minute words and then we can thank our audience. We've got about 350 people watching. Oh, great. Cool. No, thanks for, thanks for tuning in. This is the last, um, last, last we'll, we'll, we'll be at the nest this year and um, the, the, these biological collections of the eggs, the eggshells, and um, as we as we um, hear about or or discover um, deceased loons and and collect mortalities, all of those collections are going into the the research that we're doing to um, find out what's affecting loons, stressing loons in New Hampshire, um, and and so that's that, this is all part of the work. Thanks for thanks for tuning into it. <laughs> Okay. Okay, well there